<laughs> Good morning, beloveds. I think I have a squirrel. Actually, that's not true. I know I have a squirrel. I have a squirrel that lives in a tree um, outside of uh, my front door. Um, mostly because she likes to throw half-eaten, uh, or all the way eaten, pine cones at me. Um, so, but there was just a really loud noise as the video started. So, sorry that you started seeing the back of my head. Um, okay, it is Monday. It is November 23rd. Uh, our title today is Receiving... Our Bible quote is, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And that is from Matthew 7.7. 7. Um, how can we receive that which the mind refuses to entertain? Should we not then continuously develop the ability to receive more? We make life little and mean and limit our possibilities when we refuse to accept the whole gift of God. We should open our consciousness to a receptivity of the divine. There will never be any point of saturation because God is infinite. We cannot contract the infinite, but we can expand the finite. Today, I ask and know that I shall receive. Today I seek and know that I shall find. Today I knock and know that it shall be opened unto me. But what is it that I ask for? What is it that I really seek? It is to discover God in everything. To see the divine manifest in everyone. To come into, clo into close and conscious communion with life. Today, then, I receive the gift of God in its fullness, unstinted, complete. And from the Science of Mind text, As God cares for the birds who do not gather into barns, so shall we be cared for if we trust and do not doubt. And that is from page 432 of the text. Okay. Um... On Thursday in, in, in the Heartful Living class, and then again on um, Sunday, Jesse talked about the Bible quote, it's, it's more blessed to give than receive, and how that's kind of bunk. <laughs> because it makes the person who is receiving less blessed than the person who is giving. Uh, and so we've used that Bible quote to make ourselves feel better when we're doing the giving. But if you give everything that you have, then you have nothing left to give from. So sometimes you need to receive. And he's like, no, because when you are receiving, then you are giving the gift to the person who is giving to you of them being a giver. Um, so it's receiving is extremely important. And one of the other things that this one called to mind was when we, when we go looking for something, when we ask for something, we get really caught up to use an old Anne McCaffrey uh, phrase, we get hidebound. It's like, it's got to be this and it, nothing else, and it's got to come to me this specific way, um, which is where we, where we limit ourselves. It's like, only this will make me happy. Well, I read a meme the other day that said happiness is a choice. There's nothing that can make you happy. You have to choose to be happy. So... When you ask for something, you want to be specific, but not too specific. You want to leave open the possibilities for God or spirit or the divine, whatever word you want to use, to surprise you. Um, both in what it is and how it comes to you. Uh, which is one of the, because we did the, if, you ha if you've had heartfelt living with us, then 
he does the red car exercise. It's a, it's a little toy red car. And basically what you do is if you were going to buy a little red, if you were going to buy a red sports car, how would it make you feel? Now, are you willing to have those feelings with, before you get the car? Um, because then you get to the point where with the feelings that if you, ha if you, if you're willing to have the feelings, then you don't necessarily need the car. And then the car is just a bonus. And that's what it is with receiving. Um, it's like you can have anything you ask for, but when you get so specific on what it is that you want, then you're limiting your opportunities. You're limiting spirit. And the whole point of this is that spirit will give you anything if you're willing. So there's, it's kind of a double-edged sword in there. It's like, spirit will give you anything you're willing, but don't be too specific. <laughs> it's a balancing act, and I'm, I, I admit that. It's a balancing act. Um, so, and it also comes back to you cannot pour from, from an empty cup. So you can't just give. Sometimes you have to receive. And in fact, it should be a fine balancing act between giving and receiving. You should be doing both. And one is not more blessed than the other. Um, but Matthew sp clearly says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Okay, so that's where Ernest starts. How can we receive that which the mind refuses to entertain? And that's what I'm talking about with being so specific. Sometimes we get so specific because we know. It's like we're testing God. <laughs> we're testing God. It's like, it has to be exactly this. And if you don't give me this, then I can't believe. Well, one, that's not fair. And two, are you asking for something that you know that you really don't want because you want to set, and I'm going to say it, yourself up for failure? Um... And that's, that's, again, the double-edged sword of being too specific. One, God can't surprise you. And two, are you setting yourself... And that's the question. You may not be... Are you setting yourself up for failure? Huh. I'm a little concerned about that. That's my TV making a really scary alarm sound. But I'm going to finish this. Okay, it stopped. All right, I'll we'll go find out what that is in a minute. Um, should we not then consciously de de develop the ability to receive more? Yes, yes. Release the limits, release the limits. But when you release the limits, you also want to release the specif specificity. Don't get so narrow, don't get so narrow-minded. Don't get so narrow-minded that you... Um, limit your you limit what spirit will surprise you with um we make life little and mean and limit our own possibilities when we refuse to accept the whole gift of god okay <laughs> there's a lot in that sentence we make li life little and mean we make life little and mean when we get narrow when we try and as my friend uh, reverend lane says when we try and fit this wonderful, messy, juicy life into a very narrow channel. Okay, um, we are we are, we're making life little and mean, and we limit our own possibilities when we refuse to accept the whole gift of God. Because sometimes, what we ask for isn't really what we want, and if we're open to the highest and best possibility, then we are open to being surprised. We are open to the whole of God. And I'm going to freely admit, being open to the whole of God is a challenge because we are finite. The part of us that touches God is not, but we are finite. So it's hard to imagine the whole of God and it's hard to accept the whole of God. But if we exercise that muscle every day, we're going to get better. Spiritual practice. That's what I mean by exercising that muscle. We should open our consciousness to a receptivity of the divine. Practice. Practice, practice. 
There will never be any point of saturation because God is infinite. We cannot contract the infinite, but we can expand the finite. Practice, practice, practice. Today, I ask and know that I shall receive. Today, I seek and know that I shall find. It may not look like what I expect it to, but I'm willing to be surprised. Are you willing to be surprised? Today, I knock and I know that it shall be opened unto me. But what is it that I ask for? And here's where it is. What is it that I ask for? I'm not asking for stuff. I'm not asking for stuff. I'm asking for a feeling, which is why I talked about the red car. I'm asking for a feeling. I want to feel loved. I want to feel included. I want to feel safe. I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel all those feelings. That's what I want. And the divine can give those to us in so many different ways. Um, it is to discover God in everything. To see the divine manifest in everyone. To come into close and conscious communion with life. What is it that I seek? To discover God in everything. To be able to look around and see God everywhere. To look in each other's eyes and see God looking back at me. To look in the mirror and see God looking back at me. And to see God looking back at me with the eyes of love. Because we can get really judgy in the mirror. And that's one of the reasons why I keep talking about looking in the mirror and seeing God looking back at me. Looking back at me or looking back at you with the eyes of love. God is not judging you. Um, so it is that con conscious communion. Today, then, I receive the gift of God in its fullness, unstinted, and complete. Oof, okay. Um, Ernest is an amazing Bible scholar. He loved the Bible, loved reading all about Jesus. And so, as God cares for the birds who do not gather into barns, so shall we be cared for if we trust and do not doubt. That's Ernest paraphrasing a Bible quote. Um, if we trust and do not doubt. And here's the truth. We will be cared for even if we don't trust and even if we don't, and even if we do doubt. Um, but our life will feel safer and more comfortable and all of that when we do trust. Uh, so that's what this is asking us for. It's asking us to receive the blessings of God, the blessings of spirit, the blessings of who we are, the blessing of our divine inheritance, the blessing of the willingness to look around, to exercise that muscle, to expand the finite little, expand the finite that we are into the infinite that we also are. We just access it a little bit at a time. And so we want to engage our Fi our, in, in, engage our finite and reach into that infinite part of who we are. So our mission, should we choose to accept it? Oh. Our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to think about what we're asking for. It's not wrong to ask for stuff. But be clear on what feeling you're going for with the stuff. It's not wrong to ask for stuff. Ask for all the stuff you want, but be aware of your intention and be aware of what it is that you are truly seeking. And be willing to see God everywhere. See the Spirit everywhere. Because that's all there is. All right, beloveds. <laughs> Ah, we are working our way through the month of gratitude and Ernest has made me work for it. So I am going to work, I am going to move into the process of my day. I am going to ask you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. I, will, I, I don't know if you can hear this purr, but Rita has a magnificent purr. This is a 14 pound cat, by the way. Um, so definitely loving, definitely, definitely kind, definitely compassionate. This is who she is. So, um, do something loving for yourself, kind, compassionate, open the windows of your soul, 
and allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you are a beloved child of God in whom spirit is well pleased. Always. There is no time. It is the grace that we live in. Um, it's actually really nice out there. It's in the low 60s right now. So, you know, do something to engage your mind and your body today. Do something. Open your windows. Let some fresh air in. Let some fresh perspective in. <laughs> up with me right now oh my god I love this cat so much all right I'm gonna go and get in get get on with my day y'all have a wonderful day do what you need to do to make it wonderful go have go hug your loved ones go hug your loved ones hmm? all right Rita you ready to go